Good morning from the garden and welcome to today's video which is all about some interesting edible plants that I have recently bought for our edible forest. Most of these plants come from the Swiss nursery Lubera uh, but to be clear this is not a sponsored video I'm just a big fan of the nursery and their products. What makes Lubera unique is that they do a lot of uh, breeding work themselves, they select new varieties and um, in that they are um, targeting home growers, not professional growers, because home growers often have very different, want very different things than professional growers. For example, for professional growers, uniform ripening is very important, while for home growers, it is better to have fruit that ripens over a longer period of time. They provide really good quality plants. I have ordered from them before. So uh, I can testify to that. Uh, the plants are usually very good size for the price and they also provide a lot of information to help you succeed in growing. Everything is clearly labeled with um, a photo of the plant and some basic information on growing. But they also send you a booklet with a lot of information like on everything you might possibly want to know about how to plant, uh, how to prune, how to take care of all the plants that you have bought. One of the plants that I have bought before is a red fleshed apple variety. I planted that one about a year ago and I showed you the beautiful blossom uh, in my April video. But I have many more plants here, so let's get on to those. I'm excited about all the plants, so what do I start with? Um, I think the popo. I have bought two varieties of popo. If you do not know um, what popo is, it is, uh, I think, the most tropical kind of fruit that you can grow in a, in a cool climate. They're uh, originally from North America, so if you are in North America, then you probably know them, but European uh, gardeners are not uh, that familiar with popo yet. Um, you need usually two varieties for pollination, though one of those I have here, sunflower, is reportedly self fertile but um, we like popos and um, well I, I only got one chance to taste them so far but I really love the taste and my kids like mango which is a little similar to popo though popos have a more creamy texture but I'm sure uh, they will appreciate the fruit as well um, our neighbors also have a vari another variety of popo so that will help pollination too I have actually planted a popo before, but the tree died. I don't know whether it was frost damage or sun damage because young popo trees prefer to grow in uh, part shade. So I have figured out a better spot this time. Um, so this is a sunflower and this variety is called Atwood. And they're both early ripening and that's very important for us because our growing season is not that long. Uh, sunflowers should ripen here around mid-September and add wood at the end of September, beginning of October. And you can see there's quite a big difference in the size. This is because this plant is one year old and this one is two years old. Uh, it was a bit more expensive, but um, I think this one was 50 euro, this one was 60 euro. I think but uh, that's a difference in price that I'm happy to pay for uh, like to win a year unfortunately sunflower was not available in this size another fruit that is little known in Europe but also indigenous to North America is persimmon um, this variety is called prairie dawn and usually persimmons need you need um, a male and a female plant to get good pollination but this one should produce fruit uh, without a pollinator. We do have another variety however which is called super sweet and it's over there and you can see it's still super small actually even though the plant is quite old I think by now about seven years probably but it has been moved twice and um, I think the problem was when I bought it, it was root bound and it never really recovered. There are some flowers on it. They're really tiny. I don't know whether you can see. So we usually get about a handful of fruits from this one, but we like persimmons 
and we would like to get more. If you're not familiar with the fruits, they are a little similar to the related Kaki or Sharon fruit, which is available in grocery stores here, usually in fall, but they're much smaller, more, much more aromatic. Um, I really prefer the taste of persimmons. So this one will be planted somewhere here. They should get about three meters tall and about two meters, one and a half to two meters wide. So this is a, an okay distance. I have another plant that originates from North America. So that almost looks like there's a theme here, but it's not conscious. Uh, and it's uh, two varieties of service berry or Saskatoon or Juneberry. These two vari varieties were bred in Canada and they are called Seska Blue and Seska Late, respectively. They were bred for better fruit size. Um, so, and also they're a little late, later ripening than the species that is very common in the Netherlands. And the late ripening can be a good thing because the service berries are extremely, extremely popular with birds. And the later in the season, the more berries there are generally in nature. So hopefully the less the birds will be interested in the plants in our garden, but we'll have to see how that works out. We have another variety of Saskatoon in the garden already that we planted about two years ago. And this variety is called Ballerina. It was bred at the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands and also selected for a bigger size of fruits. They're not quite ripe yet, but getting there. And this plant was planted about two years, a little over two years ago. And we planted it in our lawn so that eventually it will provide a little shade here so that we can sit in summer in the shade of this tree. Usually Saskatoon here in the Netherlands or Juneberry is planted for as an ornamental because it has a very beautiful blossom and a good fall color. And many people do not realize that the fruits are edible, which is a shame because they're good they're good to eat raw unlike many other semi-wild species let's move to europe now i have also a few plants that are indigenous here like buckthorn which can be found at the coast of uh, the western coast of the netherlands um, for pollination you need male and female plants and we have already i think at least a dozen in mix planted in our edible hedge around the edge of the property but those are species and here I bought a plant, a named variety, which was bred for superior quality of fruits. They should be bigger, taste better and also the plants should be less thorny. This is obviously a female variety, but because I have more plants in my edge, uh, hedge, I did not need to, make, uh, to buy a male plant for pollination. If you don't have those, you need at least one male plant for every five female plants to get good fruit setting. The plants are also nitrogen fixers. So if you add them to your garden, you're also helping uh, your other fruit trees, fruit bearing trees, because they will get some of the nitrogen that is gets fixed by the um, buckthorn that grows close by. The fruits of buckthorn are extremely rich in vitamin C and carotan as well. Very good for you. Unfortunately, they taste quite sour. So usually they're turned into compote or jam or uh, juices. Um, so many, uh, many ways you can incorporate them in your diet. Another indigenous plant, hazelnut, variety called Price Webs Cop which I mentioned in the tour of my parents' edible garden video, because I planted one there and I really like the fruits. They're very large and really good. So I, obviously I need one in my garden too. Over here, I have dahlia plants. And one of my goals for this year was to try eating dahlia tubers. I know that the flowers are edible and I've tried those before, but I have never tried eating the tubers, which are also edible. So um, it's an ideal plant for the ornamental edible garden. You get blooms and uh, you get food. But uh, when I 
when I published my intention on Instagram, there were several people telling me that they tasted the tubers and they were not really enthusiastic. However, uh, Lubera offers several varieties. They have um, uh, under the name Deli Delias, uh, which should be superior quality for eating. I waited too long with ordering, so by the time uh, that I got around to it, they only had one variety left, which is called Fantastic. That's the only one I will get to taste. They describe the flavor as smoky, so I'm intrigued and I will report back in full. Another plant that I have here is not from Nursery Lubera, but from a Dutch nursery. And it's a tea plant, a hardy tea plant. Normally tea is uh, grows in the subtropical tropical regions, but there's a Dutch nursery, um, nursery man who decided that he wanted to breed um, species of a plant that would be completely hardy. He took eight years to do that and now he's planted a first tea plantation in the Netherlands and he's also selling the plants so that you can grow your own tea. Uh, I have not tried making tea from these plants yet, they're very small. I'm also thinking about maybe putting one in the greenhouse, though I'm hesitant to put perennial plants in the greenhouse, so we'll see. Uh, I'll try to provide them with a sheltered microclimate, but according to the breeder, they should be completely hardy. So um, hopefully we'll be drinking tea from our own plants in the future. There is one more edible plant that I'm really excited about, but I want to plant that one in my backyard. So let's head over there. This spot is the warmest and sunniest in our backyard, which is why I chose it for planting this edible. It's a pomegranate. It was also one of my 18 goals for 2018. We love pomegranates, would love to grow them, but I have not heard of anybody growing pomegranates success successfully in our climate. However, Lubera carries a selection bred in Russia, which um, should be hardy enough for our climate. It should be comparable to figs. And uh, you can see this fig behind me, which is really growing beautifully. So I hope this pomegranate will also succeed. Of course, there is a difference between a plant being hardy enough to survive and a plant actually bearing fruits. So this is definitely a gamble, but on one I'm happy to take. I'm really excited to see whether we can grow pomegranates in the Netherlands. I hope you enjoyed this plant haul video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time. Happy gardening!